Welcome to the 8th part of Godly Parenting vs. Good Parenting. Congratulations to you if you've been following us since the first week. More importantly, your children and you will certainly be blessed as you apply what is taught. Now in the first two weeks of Godly Parenting, we emphasized or focused on Gospel-centered parenting. And then the next five weeks, we looked at Grace-centered parenting. Now, for the next three weeks, we will be looking at Word-centered parenting. And we're going to begin off today with living the Word. Living the Word. As Christians, the Word of God is infinitely precious to us. So, how do you teach your children the precious Word of God? Good Christian parenting teaches the Word through set means, such as family devotions, church, memory verses. This generally entails reading and listening to the written word. Whether we know it consciously or unconsciously, our good parenting teaching essentially focuses on the mind, hid knowledge. On the other hand, godly parenting, which is based on God's word, also teaches the word through set means such as family devotions, church, memory verses, and in addition, and very importantly, through the context of everyday life. Instead of just teaching through the written word, it teaches through observation and application. It consciously and intentionally focuses on the heart to know and to love Jesus. As a product of education and society, we are brought up to learn through the mind. Since 4 or 5 years old, right up to 20 plus, all those years that we spent in school, learning has always been focused on the mind and not the heart. But if we look at the Bible, for example in the English NIV translation, the word mind appears about 163 times, whilst the word heart appears 700 and 25 times. So, how do you teach the word to your children? Mind or heart? Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 18 to 21 says, Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands. Bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. Clearly, the word is to be taught in both heart and mind. The act of tying symbols or writing on door frames is not so much as a charm or a talisman, but as a constant reminder that the word is for daily practical use, not to be confined to set times such as church or family devotions or just in our heads. Notice that the teaching of the word to our children is in the context of everyday life. That means that the Word of God is to be learned through observation and to be applied as well. When your six-year-old sees a pretty bird and says, Mom, Dad, look, a beautiful bird. That's a good opportunity to teach the Word about God as Creator or maybe about how God cares for the birds of the air, how much more He will care for us. When your teenage daughter becomes overly conscious about her looks, that's a time to apply the word and help her to see that God looks at her heart far more than what man looks at on the outward. Or maybe to apply the word where she is told that she is fearfully and wonderfully made by God. When your child is lazy, that's an opportune time to bring in the Proverbs to teach that laziness is not good and hard work is great. Or maybe to bring in the context, turn it the other way around and say, what if God was lazy and Jesus decided he was too lazy to come to earth to die on the cross for us? Where would that leave us? So, in teaching the word, it is necessary for you, godly parents, to teach your children the word in the context of everyday life. 
when the word is applied, it goes to the heart. I leave you with some practical questions which you can find below down in the description box of this video to reflect on this week. It will give you pointers on moving forward to living the word. Have a blessed week, dear parents.